In the grim darkness of the 40th millennium, humanity finds itself perpetually besieged. Gallant defenders tirelessly wage war to safeguard the realms of the God Emperor from a myriad of relentless foes. The galaxy teems with adversaries, be it the voracious swarms of Tyranids, the barbarous orcs, the malevolent entities spawned by the ruinous powers, the sadistic Dark Eldar, or the formidable empires of the Necrons and Tau, all united in their singular desire for dominance and the annihilation of the Imperium of Man. Amidst the unending tumult of warfare that scars its expansive territories, the Imperium also grapples with insurrections and recurrent internal strife across its myriad worlds. Daily, legions of men and women fall, either as offerings to the insatiable war machine or victims to the dire circumstances prevalent on many of the Imperium's planets. It is an undeniable truth that the vast majority of humans dwelling within this colossal empire endure existences marked by hardship, brutality, and despair. Yet, within this grim epic for humankind, tales circulate among the inhabitants of the Imperium. Tales that some argue are concocted to offer solace and a glimmer of hope to the populace during these turbulent times. Conversely, others staunchly believe these legends are grounded in reality, proclaiming the existence of unparalleled champions within the Imperium. These are the warriors of legend, who know not the meaning of fear, known as the Astartes. These beings are envisioned as the Emperor's supreme benediction upon humanity, his vanguard, the genuine saviors who emerge in direst need to shield the Imperium from its gravest foes. Heroes with the power to exact retribution for the innumerable souls fallen to the adversaries of humankind. This narrative, more prominent than others, tells of a fellowship of these champions, recognized under various titles. The Monarchs in Arms of Ultramar, the Progeny of Gwilliman, the 13th Legion, also called the Ultramarines. The volume of stories surrounding the Ultramarines chapter is truly astonishing. Esteemed as the most renowned and revered among all Astartes chapters, it is rumored that the Ultramarines have persisted for over 10 millennia, standing among the scarce Astartes chapters to survive from the initial legions engaged in the Great Crusade and the establishment of the Imperium. Within the vast expanse of the Imperium, the Ultramarines stand as a formidable emblem of strength. Renowned for their strategic brilliance in warfare, as well as their unwavering discipline, these fearless warriors are always prepared to lay down their lives for the success of their mission. Yet, the renown of the Ultramarines transcends mere battlefield valor. Distinctively among their kin, they are also heralds of construction and cultivation. For these warriors, safeguarding their domain and populace is intrinsic to their ethos. In the eyes of their subjects, they are not only warriors, but also revered as sagacious rulers. These guardians of humankind are exalted across the Imperium, unmatched in fame by any other chapter. While documenting their myriad accomplishments is a near Herculean task, today I shall endeavor to narrate the saga of the most celebrated chapter. Allow me to share the chronicle of the Ultramarines. In the early years of the 25th millennium, humanity was in its prime. Millennia before, mankind had stumbled upon the secrets of the warp, unveiling that through this parallel dimension, faster than light travel was achievable. Consequently, over the ensuing millennia after this groundbreaking discovery, humanity expanded across the galaxy. Millions of worlds were unveiled, human civilizations flourished, and a continuous stream of scientific breakthroughs ushered humanity into a golden era. In the scant records of this epic, it's clear that humanity, following its outward surge, wielded control over the galaxy for millennia. The boon of scientific progress birthed technological marvels, 
forged secure trading pathways among their dominions and asserted their dominance over various alien species they encountered. Today, scant details survive of this golden epic for humankind, lost to the ravages of time or deliberately expunged from the annals of history due to the cataclysm that ensued. Vast warp storms wreaked havoc across the Milky Way, severing planetary systems from each other, halting vital trade needed for the sustenance of countless worlds, and obstructing any collective efforts to repel the Xenos invaders, who preyed on a humanity teetering on the verge of annihilation. Across the cosmos, human realms toppled into chaos, ensnared in internal conflict, wars against invaders, and, according to some tales, devastated by demonic beings. This dark period, spanning over five millennia, became known as the Age of Strife. The toll was staggering. Thousands of planets were lost. The technological marvels crafted by mankind were consigned to oblivion, and the death toll from this cataclysm was beyond reckoning. Even Terra was not immune, plunging into a dire condition. Cut off from any aid, it transformed into a global war zone, with myriad clans and tribes vying for dominance over the dwindling resources. In this bleak epic, amidst humanity's direst plight, there emerged a figure, a man, though to call him merely, that seems insufficient. He bore a vision grand enough to reunify mankind, to restore its dominion over the cosmos. Shrouded in enigma, legend has it, he was the collective reincarnation of the earliest human shamans and psychers who forfeited their lives in a sacrificial rite. Their aim, to bring forth a champion for humanity, an entity of immense power destined to lead, unify, and safeguard the human race. This formidable individual would come to be revered as the emperor of mankind. To realize his grand design, the emperor's initial step was to consolidate Earth under his dominion. Nestled within the Himalayas in a clandestine stronghold, he convened the era's preeminent surviving scientists to aid in his monumental task. With his unparalleled intellect and the assistance of his confidants, the emperor embarked on a groundbreaking endeavor to forge an army of transhuman warriors. These superhuman beings, utterly loyal to his cause, were to be the vanguard in fulfilling his grand ambitions. After the initial triumphs of the Thunder Warriors' prototypes, the Emperor initiated the formation of the Legiones Astartes. These legions represented his ultimate boon to humanity. Twenty legions of genetically enhanced superhumans, entities of phenomenal might, crafted for combat and the safeguarding of his dominion. Commanding these formidable twenty legions, the Emperor positioned his offspring, the Primarchs, beings directly birthed from the Emperor's genetic blueprint. The Primarchs stand as veritable demigods, vastly surpassing a typical human in stature, strength, resilience, agility, intellect, and remarkable charisma. Yet the agents of chaos, lurking from the darkness and perceiving the threat posed by the Emperor's endeavor, succeeded in abducting his still infantile sons, dispersing them throughout the cosmos. Despite being deeply afflicted by his son's disappearance, the Emperor pressed on with his initiative, and the creation of the Astartes legions proceeded apace. During this pivotal moment, the foundation for what would eventually be heralded as the Ultramarines, the 13th Astartes legion, was laid. The initial cadre chosen to form the backbone of this nascent 13th legion was meticulously selected from a diverse array of Terra's many warrior clans. This included the valorous clans of the Maglev, the martial households of Saragon, various tribes from the Caucasus, and even the hive societies of Mediafric. Despite their divergent backgrounds, these clans shared a unifying trait, their formidable and tenacious defiance throughout the wars of Terra's unification. The Emperor, recognizing the martial prowess within these warriors, hand-picked combatants from these groups to establish the foundation of the 13th Legion. The chosen warriors were subjected to the comprehensive genetic enhancements required for their evolution into Astartes. A myriad of new organs was grafted into their bodies, among them an additional heart, a supplementary lung, 
and their physical forms and musculature expanded remarkably. These genetic alterations bestowed upon the Astartes warriors a range of extraordinary capabilities, including enduring prolonged periods without the need for sleep, healing from injuries with astounding rapidity, and the capacity to respire in various atmospheres that would prove lethal to normal human beings. Post their metamorphosis into superhuman entities, the initiation of the warriors within the legions commenced. Legends articulate that the 13th Legion distinguished themselves early on by exhibiting a level of aggressiveness surpassing the norm. Contrary to legions such as the 12th or 5th, later recognized as the World Eaters and White Scars, known for their individualism and lack of cohesion, the soon-to-be Ultramarines were celebrated for their exceptional unity and the establishment of a rigorous and structured command chain. Beyond these attributes, the 13th Legion members were celebrated for their almost obsessive commitment to fulfilling their designated missions. Stemming from their roots and prowess as unparalleled combatants, the 13th Legion was bestowed their initial moniker by the other legions, the Warborn. After triumphing in the Unification Wars, the Emperor stood unrivaled, a singular sovereign over Terra. Yet, this monumental achievement marked merely the inception of his grand design. With the forging of his 20 legions now complete, the Emperor heralded the commencement of the Great Crusade. This monumental endeavor aimed at reinstating humanity's supremacy across the cosmos, exacting vengeance upon those who had dared assail it, amalgamating the scattered human settlements under one standard, and extending the frontiers of the Imperium to realms hitherto uncharted by mankind. At the outset, the legions of Astartes, bolstered by the innumerable forces of the Imperial Guard, were dispatched to reclaim dominion over the solar system. After the system was secured, these legions and the vast Imperial armies fanned out across the stars in numerous expeditionary fleets, determined to recapture the territories once held by humanity. In this era of resurgence, the 13th Legion, numbering some 8,000 Astartes, was deployed for its inaugural mission in the reclamation of the Sol system, fighting shoulder to shoulder with its brethren from other legions under the direct command of the Emperor. Following this, it partook in illustrious campaigns such as the liberation of Diurnus and the obliteration of the Scorvidian Zeno Empire. These initial victories earned it the privilege of leading operations independently. True to its legacy, the 13th Legion triumphantly fulfilled the duties bestowed upon it, liberating numerous human worlds and vanquishing the various Xenos races it encountered throughout its campaigns. Years turned into decades, and the Imperial conquests continued at a staggering pace. Amidst these victories, a remarkable event unfolded. The galaxy-wide reconquest led to the Emperor reuniting with some of his lost sons. The discovery of the Primarchs proved to be a monumental boon for the Imperium and its legions. It's pivotal to understand that the transhuman alterations required for crafting an Astartes were derived from the genetic blueprint of the Primarchs. The Legionnaires bore a profound genetic connection to their Primarch, akin to the bond between a son and his father. This deep bond between specific legions and their genetic forebear infused them with a newfound sense of wholeness and fueled their aspirations to greater achievements. The Primarchs that were found were tutored by the Emperor himself during the Great Crusade, and their superhuman capabilities quickly qualified them to lead their respective legions. With the Primarchs at the helm, the Great Crusade shifted into an even more ambitious phase. Under the leadership of their Primarchs, the legions stretched the boundaries of the Imperium's ambitions to their utmost, Campaigns of conquest unfolded with staggering rapidity. The strategic brilliance of the Primarchs propelled their legions into grand-scale conflicts, ensuring their triumph in every venture. Rivalries of valor and daring flourished among the legions, each vying to surpass the others and earn the esteem of both their Primarch and the Emperor. Regrettably, this era cast a shadow over the 13th Legion, Without their Primarch, they waged their battles in solitude, 
obscured by the burgeoning glory of legions reunited with their primarchs. It was amidst these challenging times that the campaign known as the Osiris Rebellion unfolded. This sequence of events was triggered by a previously successful operation carried out by the 13th Legion alongside the 12th Expeditionary Fleet in the Osiris Cluster. There, the Ultramarines encountered a human civilization that had withstood the Age of Strife. Having asserted its dominance over several star systems, this civilization was subdued and brought under the Imperium's fold by the Expeditionary Fleet's forces. While the integration of this civilization into the Imperium initially seemed to progress smoothly, the Sector soon erupted into open rebellion, sparking a grueling campaign. This necessitated the Ultramarines to engage in conflict against their kin. The campaign reached its climax with the invasion of Septus XII, the Rebellion's nexus. Commanding from their flagship, the Goliath-class battle barge, Sethalm's Thunder, the Ultramarines shattered the insurgent fleet poised to thwart them. Following the obliteration of the Rebel fleet, the Ultramarines targeted the planetary defenses of Septus XII, deploying their forces across the planet's crust. Supported by relentless bombardments from their orbiting fleet, the 13th Legion's warriors besieged the Hive cities, their advance soon hindered by countless civilians. Armed with nothing but rudimentary weapons, these despondent masses surged towards the Astartes in overwhelming numbers. It dawned on the Ultramarines that this was no ordinary insurrection. Adapting their strategy to confront the deluge of civilians, the Ultramarines were met with an unforeseen challenge. Amidst the chaos, ethereal entities encased in mechanical armor materialized among the rebels. The Astartes, who witnessed these apparitions, could scarcely articulate their nature, describing only their ghastly luminescence and their capacity to unleash spectral flames. The Ultramarines had unwittingly walked into the clutches of a hitherto unknown Xenos race. The casualties mounted rapidly on the ground, transforming an already dire situation into one of utter calamity. Simultaneously, as the 13th Legion found themselves ensnared on Septus XII, an unforeseen Xenos armada ambushed them from orbit. Recognizing the dire predicament, the Ultramarines ordered a withdrawal from the planet's surface. Alas, the withdrawal came too late as the Xenos forces launched a devastating assault on the Ultramarine fleet, subsequently unleashing a merciless bombardment upon the hives of Septus XII. It was through the strategic acumen and decisive actions of Marius Gage, the newly appointed commander of the 13th, that utter catastrophe was averted. Despite the adverse circumstances, the 13th Legion's remnants successfully evacuated the planet, preserving what remained of their fleet. This harrowing conflict resulted in the loss of over 6,500 Astartes, marking it as the most grievous loss suffered by any legion in the Great Crusade's history thus far. Additionally, the 12th Expeditionary Fleet sustained significant damages, with 25% of its vessels lost to the skirmish. The aftermath revealed a grim reality. The Rebellion's human leaders across the Osiris worlds had been psychically ensnared by the Xenos encountered during the fray, orchestrating a sinister plot to reclaim the Sector by inciting humans to slaughter each other. The outcome was catastrophic. The 13th Legion, entrapped in a macabre conflict against their kin, left several planets in ruins, with the death toll soaring into the millions. This devastating defeat plunged the 13th Legion into a state of humiliation, casting shadows of doubt on their capacity for resurgence. Yet, in this bleak hour, at the precipice of despair, a beacon of hope emerged. The long-lost Primarch of the 13th Legion had been discovered, turning the tides of fate and rekindling the flames of hope within the hearts of the Ultramarines. In the midst of orchestrating the Primarch's creation, a peril was foreseen by the malevolent entities of Chaos, sensing the imminent threat posed by the completion of the Emperor's grand design. Shrouded in enigma, this pivotal moment saw the dark forces succeed in dispersing the gestational capsules of the Primarchs across the cosmos. Among these, 
the future luminary of the 13th Legion found destiny on the stark world of McCrag, nestled in the galaxy's eastern fringe. McCrag was a world where austerity reigned, a planet struggling under the yoke of a long-forgotten stellar dominion, its history lost to the annals of mankind. Amid the remnants of a bygone golden age, the inhabitants of McCrag had clung to the vestiges of a rigorous and autocratic societal structure. A flicker of their former industrial capabilities endured, enabling the crafting of venerable starship designs from eras past. Bereft of the advanced warp travel technology required for extensive voyages, their spacefaring endeavors were confined to modest exchanges with proximate systems contingent upon the intermittent calm of the tumultuous warp storms. When the nobility of McCrag encountered the capsule amidst a hunt in a verdant forest, their discerning eyes recognized it not as a relic of mysticism or folklore, but as a marvel of advanced craftsmanship. Breaching its seal, they were greeted by the sight of an infant enveloped in an ethereal glow, whose countenance and form bore an unearthly perfection. United in purpose, they resolved to present this remarkable foundling to Konor Gwilliman, the esteemed co-consul of McCrag's most prosperous and enlightened domain. Connor, whose rule was marked by wisdom and equity, perceived in the child not only an anomaly, but a promise. Embracing him as a son, Connor bestowed upon the boy his own venerable name, Roboot, thus forging a new destiny for McCrag from the cradle of this extraordinary child. Under the watchful guidance of Konor and the nurturing wisdom of Dame Sari, a woman of unparalleled intellect, capability, and warmth, Robut Gwilliman flourished. Dame Sari's influence on Robut was profound, nurturing a bond that transcended mere familial ties, shaping her into a mother figure whose counsel he valued deeply, even into his esteemed tenure as the Primarch of the 13th Legion. This nurturing haven was where Robut's prodigious talents burgeoned, by his first decade, he had eclipsed the knowledge of Macragge's most learned, his intellect and physical prowess unmistakable. His voracious appetite for learning spanned history, philosophy, and the sciences, with his memory and deductive reasoning seeming nothing short of supernatural. Yet, it was in the martial disciplines, revered as high art on Macrag, that Roboot's genius truly shone. Recognizing his son's natural strategic acumen, Konor appointed Roboot at the helm of an expeditionary force destined to bring order to the untamed expanses of the Northern Territories. Roboot Gilliman's return to Civitas was heralded by his triumphant conquest over the marauding Illyrium hordes, a campaign that showcased his unparalleled military genius. Yet, the sight that greeted him and his legion at the outskirts of Civitas was far from the celebratory welcome they had envisioned. Plumes of smoke ascended from the heart of McCraggy's capital, painting a dire picture of chaos unleashed. The streets were awash with the turmoil of citizens in flight, desperate to escape the clutches of an unfolding anarchy. Amidst this disarray, Gwilliman received tidings that plunged his heart into despair. Co-consul Gallen, driven by a treacherous lust for dominion, had staged a violent coup aiming to usurp Konor's rightful place and claim the reins of power. Upon his frenzied arrival, Robut Gilliman bore witness to the final moments of his adoptive father's life, cradling Konor in a poignant embrace as he succumbed to his wounds. The profound grief of losing his father melded with a simmering rage within Gilliman, setting the stage for a relentless crusade against the architects of this vile betrayal. In a decisive and swift response, Robut Gwilliman, alongside his loyal army and the embattled populace of Civitas, decisively quelled the uprising. The mutinous aristocracy was vanquished, their mercenary forces scattered, and the city's streets bore the grim testament to justice served with the dangling bodies of the insurgents. Order was swiftly reinstated within the capital and its adjacent territories, restoring peace under Gwilliman's unwavering command. As the 13th Legion embarked on a grueling and bloody endeavor within the Osiris Cluster, the Emperor's fleet, meanwhile, made landfall on Espendor, a world nestled in the Ultima Segmentum. Despite the challenging conditions that defined their existence, 
The resilient people of this modest planet, who had weathered the Age of Strife, readily pledged their allegiance to the Imperium. They recounted to the Emperor how, even through the dark times of the Age of Strife, they had succeeded in preserving certain connections and commercial exchanges with the human communities of neighboring worlds. The inhabitants relayed to the Emperor tales of Macrag, a realm under the governance of Consul Konor Gilliman and his progeny, Robut, by name. Such was the magnitude of Robut's fame that tales of his extraordinary deeds had permeated even the far-flung systems. To the Emperor, Robut was portrayed as an almost celestial entity, endowed with unparalleled intellect and vigor. Captivated by the possibility that this extraordinary individual could be one of his estranged progeny, the Emperor commanded his armada to chart a course for Macrag. As if by some unseen hand seeking to thwart their reunion, fierce warp tempests beleaguered their voyage, elongating their expedition to nearly five standard years before they could make landfall. Upon setting foot on Macrag, the sovereign of mankind himself was taken aback by the planet's condition. Within the span of mere years, Macrag had transformed into a prosperous and orderly haven. The overhaul Macrag had undergone facilitated a state of peace and affluence for its denizens. Macrag's forces were well furnished, grand urban centers had risen, and secure trade channels with adjacent worlds were firmly established. Witnessing these advancements, the Emperor recognized these as the unmistakable hallmarks of one of his progeny's handiwork. During their encounter, Robut, employing his sharp intellect, swiftly discerned the true identity of his visitor as his biological father. Previously, the Consul of Macrag had frequently pondered over his exceptional nature. His audience with the Emperor illuminated his understanding providing Gwilliman with the resolutions to the enigmas that had accompanied him from his earliest memories. The Emperor and his newfound son engaged in profound discourse, wherein the Emperor shared with Robut his grand vision for humanity and the pivotal role of the Great Crusade within this plan. He delineated the specific function he had foreseen for Robut and inquired whether he was prepared to join him in realizing this grand vision. Legend holds that Gwilliman pledged his allegiance to his father instantaneously, embracing the role designated to him as the Primarch of the 13th Legion without a moment of hesitation. While certain of his brothers necessitated extensive training under the Emperor, Robut was an exception. Both the Emperor and Imperial scrutineers swiftly acknowledged Gilliman's unparalleled intellect even when juxtaposed with his siblings. His analytical prowess and strategic acumen were indeed unparalleled. Yet, it was in his unmatched skills as an organizer and ruler where Robut truly distinguished himself from his brethren. Observers across the Imperium were unanimous in their belief that with such a leader, the 13th Legion would not only rebound, but also secure a pivotal role in the Great Crusade. Despite acknowledging Gwilliman's extraordinary capabilities, few could foresee the monumental achievements the Primarch of the 13th Legion was destined to accomplish. Eager to fulfill the task his father had bestowed upon him, the newly anointed Primarch of the 13th Legion dedicated himself with unmatched zeal. He immersed himself in the study of the galaxy, the Imperium, and its technological marvels both day and night. Gilliman's ambition went beyond merely assuming command of the 13th Legion. He aimed to fundamentally reform it. He delved deep into the Legion's history, scrutinizing every battle report and dissecting each campaign. This thorough examination allowed him to pinpoint his troops' strengths and vulnerabilities. Leveraging his extraordinary analytical skills, he swiftly formulated a strategy to position his Legion as an indispensable force within the Great Crusade. Upon Gilliman assuming command, his legionnaires greeted him with boundless joy, pledging unwavering loyalty for the honor of having him as their primarch. Signifying the legion's rebirth, Gilliman bestowed upon them their new identity, the Ultramarines. He conveyed his ambitious plans for the Great Crusade and the legion's pivotal role in it. With his remarkable charisma and eloquence, 
Gilliman effortlessly ignited a fervent zeal within the Ultramarines. Any lingering uncertainties vanished, replaced by a rejuvenated spirit. They were convinced that in Gwilliman they had found the leader who would guide them to triumph and renown. Inspired by the reforms he enacted on Macrag, Gwilliman set out to thoroughly revamp the organizational framework of his legion. While his warriors were undeniably valiant and proud, he sought to imbue them with the philosophical principles he had embraced during his upbringing on Macrag. He championed virtues such as bravery, brotherhood, and selfless honor within the ranks and elevated the sanctity of human life to the highest principle. For Robut, the life of every Astartes, as well as that of every faithful servant of the Emperor, was precious and not to be squandered lightly. He imparted to his legion the conviction that the essence of an Astartes warrior transcended the mere act of combat. He was to champion ideals, uphold honor, safeguard the lives of his brethren, and foremost, defend the sanctity of human existence. This profound reverence for the well-being of humanity would elevate the 13th Legion to a status of unparalleled respect and veneration across the Imperium. Yet, it was Gwilliman's emphasis on strategic analysis and meticulous preparation that forged the 13th Legion into the indomitable force it came to be known as. Unlike other legions that primarily leaned on their martial capabilities, Gilliman championed the virtues of strategic planning, thorough organization, and careful analysis. As a consummate perfectionist, he believed that the true outcome of a battle was determined long before its commencement, insisting that nothing, absolutely nothing, should be left to chance. For Gilliman, the components such as flawless logistics, superior intelligence gathering, and the thorough study of an adversary are deemed more critical than the actual battle. However, transcending all these facets, one principle stands supreme in the Primarch's ethos, the virtue of introspection and self-evaluation. In a stark contrast to the overweening pride exhibited by some of his brethren, Gwilliman values the capacity for self-critique above almost everything else. Hence, the Ultramarines never rest on their laurels. They meticulously analyze even the slightest missteps in their victories, forever striving towards perfection and continuous improvement. Beyond his responsibilities as the Primarch of the 13th Legion, Gwilliman ascended to the prestigious position of Supreme Commander of the entire Great Crusade in the galaxy's Eastern Front. This rapid elevation to such a pivotal role, especially shortly after his introduction to the Emperor, was a testament to his extraordinary capabilities. Distinguishing himself from his fellow Primarchs, Gilliman chose not to immediately embark on aggressive military campaigns. Instead, he focused on imparting the knowledge and principles he held dear to his legionnaires. Gwilliman designated Macrag as both the heart of the 13th Legion and the nucleus of a burgeoning domain within the broader Imperium, bestowing upon it the name Ultramar. He envisioned Ultramar as a formidable bastion of the Imperium's might in the galaxy's eastern reaches. Undertaking the integration of neighboring worlds into this realm, he embarked on a mission of modernization, leveraging the vast resources of the Imperium. He fortified these worlds, establishing centers for recruitment and training on each. Governance was entrusted to the most capable and honorable individuals tasked with creating efficient, self-sufficient administrations. Ultramar stands as a testament to Gwilliman's brilliance. Through his efforts in safeguarding and advancing the myriad worlds within Ultramar, he nurtured prosperity and fostered a strong belief in the Imperium, unifying these worlds into a cohesive entity. By valuing the lives of his people so profoundly, Gwilliman earned widespread love and respect across Ultramar, with his legion held in high esteem. For the citizens of Ultramar, there existed no higher honor than the prospect of their offspring being chosen to join the ranks of the 13th Legion. In establishing Ultramar, Gwilliman pursued several key goals. Foremost, to secure a solid foundation upon which the legion could rely during its campaigns. Next, 
to fulfill the Legion's vast material requirements by advancing the industries across various worlds, and ultimately to ensure a steady stream of high-quality recruits motivated by a shared desire to contribute to his grand vision for humanity. In remarkably short order, recruits began to arrive in astounding numbers. Many enlisted in the Auxilia to contribute to Ultramar's defense, while the ranks of Astartes' aspirants within the 13th Legion swelled tremendously. This steady stream of high-quality recruits throughout the 13th's campaigns would soon establish the Ultramarines as the most populous legion in terms of manpower. After establishing the core of Ultramar, Robut delegated to some of his finest warriors the task of further expanding the realm by methodically integrating nearby worlds. Meanwhile, Gilliman himself plunged back into the Great Crusade, initially focusing on the eastern reaches of the galaxy before venturing into the more hostile southern territories. The 12th Expeditionary Fleet, now an immense force, made rapid and relentless conquests. The Xenos empires it encountered were swiftly vanquished, seemingly rendering the 13th Legion's advance inexorable. Alongside their martial triumphs, Gilliman ensured that his legionaries also established fortifications on the worlds they had conquered, leaving a legacy of strength and security in their wake. The strategic fortifications established by the Ultramarines facilitated a highly efficient logistics network, ensuring a steady flow of both manpower and resources from Ultramar. This infrastructure, coupled with their relentless string of victories, led to an exponential growth in the Ultramarines' numbers. Under Gwilliman's leadership, not only were casualties among soldiers and Astartes markedly reduced, but there was also a relentless stream of fresh recruits from Ultramar bolstering their ranks. Contrary to what one might expect from such rapid expansion, where high attrition rates could be anticipated, the Ultramarine's campaigns were remarkably efficient, resulting in minimal losses. Amidst their conquests, the Ultramarine's ranks swelled impressively. From the few thousand who emerged from the aftermath of the Osiris campaign, their numbers burgeoned to an astonishing 250,000 Astartes at the zenith of the Great Crusade, positioning them as the most formidable force among all the legions. Despite the unbroken string of victories claimed by the 13th Legion across decades, a shadow of grief and bitterness lingered among Gwilliman's sons. The deep scars left by the catastrophic defeat in the Osiris Cluster six decades prior had not faded. With the Ultramarine's honor at stake, Gwilliman dedicated himself to hunting down the elusive Xenos responsible for his son's humiliation. Understanding the paramount importance of honor to his legion, Robut was determined to exact vengeance, to restore the pride and glory of his Ultramarines. In the year 899 of the 30th millennium, a detachment from the 12th Legion, led by Praetor Arid Krug, engaged in battle at the galaxy's far southwest, taking on the orcs of the Glorchian Empire, while the Legion, then known as the Warhounds before adopting the name World Eaters, was locked in a ferocious confrontation with the orcs, an unexpected turn occurred as mysterious Xenos forces launched an assault, targeting the Warhounds' fleet in orbit simultaneously. Utilizing the same tactics that had been effective against the Ultramarines six decades prior, the Cybrids launched an assault, teleporting onto the vessels of the 12th Legion. This unexpected maneuver initiated a brutal confrontation. Despite suffering heavy casualties, the future world eaters displayed remarkable resilience. Upon hearing of the incident, Gwilliman, then engaged in campaigns in the galaxy's southern reaches, commanded the 12th Legion to persevere and, if feasible, trace the Cybrids' vessels back to their origin. Charged with a thirst for retribution for their fallen brethren from the battle six decades past, the Ultramarines spearheaded a formidable fleet into the system, eager to settle scores with the Cybrids. The legions of the 13th and 12th pursued the Xenos to the confines of the Eurydice Terminal, where the decisive confrontation unfolded. The Cybrids, leveraging their familiar tactics, endeavored to fend off the legions. Yet, they faced a transformed adversary, not merely in strength, but under the leadership of a tactician of unparalleled brilliance. 
Despite enduring substantial losses, the Ultramarines delivered a devastating blow to their foes, ensuing a relentless eradication of the Cybrid presence. None were spared. This act of retribution, while ruthless, served to mend the tarnished honor of the Ultramarines, paying tribute to those fallen in the grim episode of the Osiris Cluster. After the obliteration of the Cybrids in the Eurydice Terminal Conflict, the Ultramarines' military endeavors proceeded unabated, allowing the fleets of the 13th Legion to sustain their rapid progression across the eastern and southern quadrants of the galaxy. Meanwhile, Yulan Ciceris, the esteemed leader of the Ultramarines' 15th chapter, was securing a hard-fought victory in the galaxy's east. Guilliman continued his march southward in the galaxy, where he notably secured a decisive victory in aiding the human worlds of Tarsus against Xenos invaders. Following these victories, Horus Lupercal, the Primarch of the Luna Wolves and co-leader of the Great Crusade alongside the Emperor, dispatched Gilliman and his Ultramarines to assist the Alpha Legion in subduing the defiant world of Testra. This world belonged to a resistant coalition of totalitarian colonies opposed to Imperium rule. The ensuing campaign was executed swiftly. However, it was during this time that the relationship between the Ultramarines and the Alpha Legion soured, a rift that would yield significant repercussions in the years to follow. Amidst the Ultramarines' engagement in significant confrontations, the Alpha Legion limited its actions to minor raids that bore little consequential weight. Gilliman, seeking to address this imbalance, convened with his brother Alpharius to express his concerns, urging him to either commit fully to the campaign's efforts or to cede complete command to Gilliman. Unbeknownst to Gilliman, the Alpha Legion had, alongside their superficial raids, conducted a covert operation, infiltrating the planet's governing and logistical frameworks to dismantle the enemy's capabilities from within. This groundwork laid by the Alpha Legion set the stage for a comprehensive invasion, during which acts of sabotage surged across the planet. These strategic disruptions severed supply lines and cast the world into turmoil, showcasing the clandestine efficacy of the Alpha Legion's methodologies. The Alpha Legion's meticulous strategy resulted in the utter decimation of the Testron defenses. The conflict was swift and unforgiving, leaving a scarred planet in its wake. In the aftermath of their withdrawal, the Alpha Legion's deliberate sabotage efforts bore cruel fruit. Infrastructure lay in ruins, societal upheaval ensued, and the streets were littered with the deceased. The ensuing chaos birthed widespread disease and hunger, culminating in a catastrophic loss of life, with the grim toll reaching an estimated 90% of Testra's inhabitants. The campaign's aftermath painted a stark portrait of devastation, marking a tragic chapter in the broader narrative of the Great Crusade. Gwilliman's indignation was palpable. He condemned the Alpha Legion's tactics as dishonorable, a betrayal of the Astartes' noble legacy, and a flagrant disregard for human sanctity. His grievance, voiced to Horus, found no sympathy. Instead, Horus lauded Alpharius for the campaign's swift conclusion. While the Imperium may have claimed victory, the chasm this event created between the Alpha Legion and the Ultramarines was irreparable, marking the end of their comradeship in battle. As years turned into decades, the Ultramarines' legacy of conquest grew ever more legendary. Unwavering in the face of any adversary, their relentless crusade brought countless worlds under the banner of the Imperium. Their string of unbroken victories solidified the 13th Legion status as one of the most prolific conquerors within the Astartes, second only to the illustrious Luna Wolves, led by Horus Lupercal himself. In 964 of the 30th millennium, the Emperor entrusted Gwilliman with a monumental task, to obliterate Monarchia, the capital of Kur. This splendid city, erected by the 17th Legion, the Word Bearers, stood as a testament to their veneration of the Emperor. Over the years, Terra had been alarmed by numerous reports detailing the Word Bearers' conduct throughout the Great Crusade. The Word Bearers, led by Primarch Lorger Aurelian, revered the Emperor as a deity, 
zealously spreading their faith across their conquests. They erected magnificent cities, temples, and sanctuaries in his honor, indoctrinating the subjugated worlds with their beliefs. Such actions directly contradicted the imperial truth, the emperor's edict that denied the worship of deities, including his own divinity. The emperor's stance against religion, framed as a measure to curb conflict and superstition, hid deeper, darker truths that would later come to light. The directive to Gilliman was uncompromising. He was to chastise his brother by annihilating Monarchia. This task deeply troubled Gwilliman, who found the prospect of punishing his sibling so severely distressing. Nonetheless, he concealed his turmoil, adhering strictly to the command. The Ultramarines' armada assumed position around Kur, meticulously evacuating the populace of its significant urban centers prior to unleashing orbital bombardments. Amidst these campaigns, Lorgar, engaged with his legion elsewhere, hastened back to Kur. Upon his return, he was confronted with the desolation of Monarchia, standing amidst its ruins alongside Gwilliman and a detachment of Ultramarines. The sight rendered the word-bearers aghast, driving Lorgar into a fury as he confronted his brother. In a decisive psychic intervention, the Emperor compelled the entirety of the 17th Legion to kneel amidst the remnants of their faith, while the Ultramarines towered over them, embodiments of verdict. What was once deemed a sacred homage was now branded as treachery. The Emperor mandated Lorgar to halt his doctrinal disseminations and to proceed with the Great Crusade's endeavors. To oversee compliance, a detachment of his elite guard, the Legio Custodes, was dispatched alongside the word bearers. Though crushed by the disgrace, Lorgar submitted to the Imperial Decree. With the departure from the core system, the word bearers recommenced their expansionist campaigns. Yet, the indignity suffered on Kur would unfurl a chain of calamitous events. In the terminal year of the 30th millennium, the Imperium's forces encountered the most vast orc dominion ever recorded in human annals. Horus Lupercal, Primarch of the Luna Wolves and co-leader of the Great Crusade with the Emperor, orchestrated one of the most extensive campaigns undertaken by the Imperium the Ulanor Crusade. More than 100,000 Astartes from various legions and upwards of 8 million troops from the Imperial Army were mobilized for this colossal endeavor. The legions of the Ultramarines and White Scars, bolstered by allies such as the Mechanicum's Legio Titanicus, launched an assault on the peripheral worlds of the Ulanor system. This strategic maneuver was designed to lure the bulk of the Orc contingents away from Ulanor Prime. Simultaneously, the primary strike team, consisting of the full Luna Wolves Legion, Titans from the Legio Mortis, and over two million Imperial Army soldiers, penetrated deep into the core of the Orc Empire, targeting the planet Ulanor Prime and decimating every bastion in their path. This prolonged campaign culminated in a monumental triumph for the Imperium. In the aftermath, the Emperor decreed a grandiose celebration to mark the pinnacle of the Great Crusade, following over two centuries of relentless conquest. This event was designed not only to honor the valiant warriors of the Crusade, both mortal and Astartes, but also to serve as a platform for the Emperor to make a pivotal declaration. At this grand triumph, 14 legions of Astartes and thousands of regiments from the Imperial Army were paraded before the Emperor and the nine Primarchs who were in attendance that day. The climax of this magnificent ceremony saw the Emperor showering praises upon his son Horus, elevating him to the position of War Master, thereby entrusting him with the supreme leadership of the Great Crusade. The gathering was taken aback when the Emperor disclosed his plan to hand over the reins of the Crusade to Horus and return to Terra. He aimed to dedicate himself to a clandestine endeavor, one that promised to be of profound benefit to the entirety of humanity. The veil of secrecy enshrouding this project bred skepticism among several Primarchs, bewildered by the Emperor's refusal to disclose his intentions. In the aftermath of Ulanor's triumph, and the elevation of Horus to War Master, while many brethren extended their felicitations, 
envy festered in the hearts of a few. Observers of the Imperium, present during these momentous events, were puzzled by the decision not to appoint Gwilliman to this prestigious position. Nevertheless, Gwilliman accepted his father's choice with grace, returning to his legion to persevere in the monumental endeavor of the Great Crusade. In the ensuing years, the progeny of Gilliman, true to their renowned legacy, relentlessly pursued their triumphant campaigns, extending their dominion across the southern galaxy. Engrossed in their string of conquests, the Ultramarines remained oblivious to the dire developments transpiring across the cosmos in the Istvan system. It was around the year 7 of the 31st millennium when Raboot Gilliman received directives from the War Master, instructing him to retreat to Ultramar and marshal forces for an impending campaign against an Orc Dominion looming in the galaxy's far southern reaches. Horus relayed to Gwilliman his intentions to dispatch the word bearers as reinforcements in this endeavor, aiming to mend the frayed ties between the two legions since the incident at Monarchia. Gwilliman welcomed Horus's proposition and proceeded to ready his legion for the upcoming campaign. Positioned in orbit around Kalth, nestled within the core of Ultramar, Gilliman and his legionnaires stood in anticipation of Lorger and his word bearer's arrival. Yet, not in their wildest imaginings could they have anticipated what was poised to unfold. Soon, the very fate of the Imperium would shift irrevocably thrusting the 13th Legion into the gravest ordeal of its storied existence. But that tale awaits another chapter.